Hey everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to the Book Refuge and welcome to the start of a reading vlog that I wasn't planning to do, but a couple things have happened, so let's chat about it quick. So it's Friday afternoon at about 4.30 and I got off work early today because I was supposed to go spend the weekend with my sister and my nieces. And we have blowing wind. We don't even have a full-blown blizzard or storm, but we have 30 to 40 mile an hour winds that are causing whiteout conditions with all the powdery snow that we have. And so all of the major interstates through the middle of Minnesota, which is where my family is, um, I live in Fargo, which I don't expect you to know the geography, but Fargo is literally on the border between, um, or like of North Dakota and the Minnesota. And my family lives in the middle of Minnesota. And all of the major roads in Minnesota have been closed. And if you are caught on the roads, it's a thousand dollar fine. And if you end up in the ditch, you'll be in a lot of trouble because they are warning you. Um, I would not like to end up in the ditch. Uh, so I'm going to be stuck here because the bad weather is supposed to last until noon tomorrow. So by the time it would be safe to go, I wouldn't be getting there until the afternoon. And then I was going to come back Sunday morning anyway. So that got ended. So... I still left work early because I was like, you know what, I'm not going to sit here. I want to go home and pout a little bit and then get on with it, right? So it actually is though it's going to be okay. Like it's going to be fine. I'm sad about it, but I'm going home again in two weeks. Or I mean now it won't be again. It'll be the first time because it is one of my niece's birthdays. So I'll be going home for that birthday party anyway. But it was sad because my brother-in-law was gone, so we were going to have a sleepover, and once the girls go to bed, we were going to drink and have fun, and <sighs> so I'm kind of bummed, but I decided I would do a reading vlog, and here's the second part of why. I actually started a reading vlog on Monday <laughs> of this week, because it was the Faro Feb readathon this week, and I mean, actually, it's like still going on. But I've already finished it. Like, I read all of my books for the readathon. It was great. I had a blackout. <sighs> I had a blackout on my board. And yeah, I'm basically I'm done with it. And I didn't even realize until last night that I had started that vlog and then didn't film it anymore. <laughs> so I was like, damn it. I really dropped the ball with that. And instead of filming a clip where I just talk about all the fantasy books that I read, which is basically what my weekly wrap up is, right? Like that's what I do. <laughs> I was like, well, how about I'll just do a weekend reading vlog, just reading whatever. So that's what we're going to do. Currently I am finishing up, finally finishing up rescanning all of my books in which if you came to one of my, um, I did reading sprints two weeks ago, I think for like three hours long where I was scanning books in. I only got through like one and a half bookshelves during that time. <laughs> and so I've just kind of been doing one bookshelf at a time and also getting rid of a lot of books. Like I have quite a few boxes of books that I'm going to be donating. Um, that is the plus side of having to rescan things in is that I usually purge a good amount of books, um, particularly some older like YA fantasy that I have from when I did, you know, fantasy reviews. So I'm feeling good about it. So I only have two shelves left in my room and I'm currently listening to, um, oh, I have it right here. I am listening to an audiobook. I am listening to um, Beauty Tempts the Beast. This is the last book in the Sins for All Seasons. Let's see where I'm at. There we go. So this is how far in I am. So I should finish this um, in the next like hour or two. So that'll be great. I will have wrapped up a Sin for All Seasons. So this book actually has the sister 
of Griff, who is the hero in A Scoundrel, The Scoundrel of My Heart. Is that what it's called? Yeah. So yeah, I've really enjoyed this series. Um, so I'm listening to that. Then I have a couple options and we'll see what ends up happening. Um, I have my arc for how to be a wallflower that I would like to start soon. Um, cause I feel very blessed that I got this arc from Eloisa James sent this to me. Um, so I would like to read that. Also, I grabbed the audiobook for The Duke's Perfect Wife, which this would be a reread, um, but I wanted to reread some of my favorite Jennifer Ashley since I will be interviewing her in two weeks. In two weeks, I will be. Um, and this is one of my favorites after Lord Ian McKenzie. This is one of my favorites. And the audiobook was available now, like I could download it right away. So I did that. And I think that I might reread this. We'll see. Um, and then a couple other options that I'm thinking of. I have a couple arcs that I could do. Um, I just got one from Jenica Snow that is a mafia arc that's supposed to be a pretty, like, dirty mafia, which could be fun. I haven't read a mafia book in a little while. It's been a hot minute since I have. Also, I still have a few Dramine fanfics and a Snamine, Snamine, however you say a Snap, Snap, a Snape Hermione fanfic that I downloaded from the list that you guys gave me because I put a post up on my community page a couple weeks ago and I've just kind of been saving them. So I have those to choose from. So I really don't know which direction I'm going to go, um, but for sure I know what I will be doing. Um, right now is finishing those last two shelves because I want to see what my total of read and unread books are because that's something that I'm actually tracking this year is to see how much of my physical library like how the what the percentage ends up being by the end of the year see if I make a dent at all um so yeah for sure for the next couple hours we'll be listening to this then it'll probably be time to make dinner by the time I'm done with that. I'm not really hungry at all right So, yeah. We'll see where we're at with that. Yeah. We'll see where we're at with that by that time. And then, yeah, I'll let you know what I end up reading next. Sorry, this was a weird clip. But anyway, so when we get stuck because of a blizzard, we turn it into a weekend reading vlog. That's what we're doing. That's the fun that we're having. <laughs> Hello. So it's the next morning. <laughs> I didn't end up wanting to film a clip last night. So we'll chat now. Um, it was a successful night. Sorry. I'm still a little bit bummed <laughs> that I didn't get to go to my sister's because this morning now it is the wind, the miles per hour is only three miles per hour. And it's perfectly clear, but just for the fact of, like, not getting there the night before, it makes the trip, like, exponentially less, like, worth it because it's a long trip to make, you know? Because by the time I get ready and go, I would only get to be there for a couple of hours. So, anyway, it's okay. We had a good reading night last night. It finished two books, which is great. So I finished Beauty Tempts the Beast while I was scanning in my books, which I'm finally finished with. And I feel really good about that because I ended up... It's funny because um, I'm keeping track of that this year. My um, books that I own versus the ones that are read, which I can just show you this. This is a vlog. I can show you things. Y'all are watching recently, you know, my little black book here is my bullet journal. Um, I'm not very talented with it yet, but you know what? I'm proud of the stuff that I'm doing. And so at the beginning of the year, I set up some different tracking methods. Um, just, you know, just for fun, like you do. So one of the things that I'm tracking is the size of my library. Not because I'm trying to hit a certain size, but because I'm going to be doing a certain percentage. So I actually should have calculated this before I started filming, but I'll show you in a later clip. So 
at the very start of the year, I had 1,706 books. Here, I'll show you what it looks like. This is my library, which that's actually the name of the app that I use as well. Um, I will put a link down below to it in the Android store. I can't remember the equivalent that people were using on iOS because this isn't currently available on iOS. I thought that it was. There are some equivalent apps that are kind of like it. But this one is free for the first 50 books. And then it's like $5 for infinity amount of books. And they never charge you again. They do ask for donations every like year. They'll be like, hey, would you be willing to donate um, for like the upkeep of the app? And I just do donate because I've been using this app for six years. Um, but anyway, the app is called My Library, and I scan all of my books in. And now, when you get a new phone, which I've shared, I think it was, I mean, it was almost a month ago now that I got a new phone because the screen on my old one started to get all wavy, you know, with like the oil slick kind of thing, which is really sad <laughs> because the phone I had before this one was kick-ass. Like, it was, it was great. Um... And I mean, this one is fine. It's the next highest, you know, it's the next version, but it doesn't have as much space because I think that Samsung realized that if they put that much space in their phone that people weren't getting new phones as quickly because my old Galaxy had 512 gigabytes. So I could have hours and hours of filming on my phone and I didn't have to like clean out, the, like I didn't have to delete stuff. And the highest you can buy now is the 128, you know, so like a fourth of the size or a third, you know, whatever that works out to be, um, which I'm still able to film, you know, basically like a week's videos and get them uploaded. And then I have to like delete them from my phone, which is lame because sometimes I want to keep them on there for longer. Um, I mean, they are in my cloud for longer, so that's fine. Anyway, I'm rambling about this, but the point being when I get a new phone, <laughs> There's a way with the app for you to export all of the books to like a Google Sheets or Excel. Um, and I've done this before successfully where I was able to export it and then get it downloaded to another phone. Like I was able to do that. It didn't keep the book covers because to export the photos would take like so many gigabytes to do that. Um, but at least I had the titles saved. Um, However, this time around, and I think part of it is like, <laughs> my library is very big. It didn't work, which is okay. It, it's okay because what happened when I went through and rescanned everything is I found a lot of books to donate um, that I have been meaning to get rid of, but I haven't because I basically have to touch, you know, I have to touch every book that I own to scan it back in. Um, so... I started the year with 1,706 books and I had 900 unread. And that was at like, that was, that was probably like the first week of January that I did it. So it wasn't the exact beginning of the year. Um, but then at the end of, or I do it, I think at the beginning of the month, I don't even know what I'm doing yet. I'll get more serious about the day that I actually write it in here because I've messed it up, I think, but it's okay. Point being, in January, I had 1,714, and I had 901 that were unread. So then I just finished scanning these in last night, and after getting rid of at least a couple hundred books, like I have four boxes worth of books, I haven't counted, but at least 150 books is what I'm getting rid of. But I got a lot of books for Christmas, and I think there was also one shelf that wasn't scanned in originally, so those ones weren't in my original total. Because as of yesterday, I have 1,727 books, and I have 862 that are unread. So I have more that are, or I have less books that are unread now but I also got rid of a shit ton of books. So anyway, that's going to be my little chart. And I want my unread percentage 
to be higher or no, I want my red percentage to be higher than my unread percentage. I don't have a specific goal for that yet. I kind of want to see what the trend is to see if that tells me because there's two things. Number one, if I am buying like indie books, self-pub books, they are 99% of the time books that I've already read unless I get them in a book box, which means like I didn't buy them or they are books in a series where I've already started the series and I like it, but I haven't read them all. So when I'm buying those books, they're automatically going into the red column and they're not affecting my unread percentage. In fact, they, you know, they help it. But when I go on like a shopping spree and buy like 50 historicals that I haven't read any of them, that's where we start to, you know, and at least 60, 70% of my unread books are all of my historicals, you know, that I use for pictures or because they're really pretty and I want them. And I don't feel so bad about that because I can buy 50 of those and it costs me like $30 because there's this one place where they're two for a dollar for me, you know? So it's not like that necessarily means that I spent more, but I don't know. So we'll see how this goes. I'm just gonna, you know, periodically month by month be tracking that. So that was 10 minutes of talking about that, but I know some of you guys like to know that stuff. So there it is. This is my bullet journal. I was given three of these for Christmas. So we'll see how many, like, I wonder if I'll use like one a year or if it'll last longer, but I'm really liking using bullet journal and kind of making the flat lays what you want them to be. Um, cause I've used previously, I used the, the little inklings designs book planner and I really like that, but I just don't use it cause I don't really use a calendar as like a flat, like I don't use it that way. Um, I more like just list out important dates and then have those dates in my like, Google calendar. Um, and I don't necessarily post on certain days. So like planning out posts and doing that, like I just don't do it. So the bullet journal, I can more like make up whatever I want, you know? So, okay, back to this. <laughs> so this, as I've said, this is the last book in the Sins for All Seasons. And I got to tell you, up until like 60% into this book, I wasn't as connected with it as I was with previous books in this series. Like it was good. Beast slash Benjamin is someone I was very much looking forward to reading about. Um, and this girl, I was intrigued by Althea because I had read Scoundrel of My Heart, which is about her brother Griff. And they, their father was a traitor to the crown. Um, and was, I believe he was like executed because of that. Um, and so they lost their standing in society. And so her brothers are working on this scheme to try to clear their name. And Althea has decided that she wants to become a mistress basically. Um, and she runs into Beast where she's working as a tavern wench basically at Gilly's Tavern. Um, Gilly is one of the other true loves who is now a duchess. <laughs> um, and he likes not only the look of her, cause yeah, he thinks she's pretty, but he realizes that she is sophisticated and he finds out who she is and knows that she was a lady previously. And he owns, he doesn't own a brothel. This is where it's tricky to explain, but he owns a home where he's basically like the protector of these sex workers. Um, because he wanted a place for women to be safe, he doesn't collect a fee from them. He doesn't like, you know, make sure that they're tapping a certain amount of clientele every night. He literally provides a safe, clean home for them because he's seen too many women in Whitechapel um, be abused and discarded. And it's actually hinted in this book that he comes across one of the victims of Jack the Ripper, the one who, I can't remember her name. I actually just listened to a podcast about this recently. Um, one of the ladies was like left in a doorway standing up, which is a way that a lot of 
homeless would like sleep in Whitechapel. They would just like sleep in a doorway. And one of his jobs was called a like knocker upper, which means he would go to people's houses to like wake them up for work. That's what he would do when he was a, when he was a kid. And he came across a woman who was murdered violently, which we're supposed to assume is one of the victims of Jack the Ripper. And that always kind of put it in him that he wanted to be there to look out for the women. He just wanted to. Um, because his mother, Eddie True Love, like she's someone who always takes care of those less fortunate, even though she doesn't have much herself. So that's the backstory of Beast. I just spent a lot of time on that. So point being, he owns this home, this, this house where, yeah, the women practice their trade there. But he keeps them safe. And if they ever want out of prostitution, you know, if they ever want to stop sex work, he helps them find positions. And one of the things he wants to do is help them be able to better themselves and give them some skills so that it's easier for them to become a companion or something like that. And so long, long story long, he asks Althea if she will be a teacher for these women, be a tutor to give them the skills where they could you know, make it in society, not make it in society, but like be acceptable enough to get a position. And she needs the money for her and her brothers. And so she agrees in the exchange that he teaches, he gives her seduction lessons so that, um, she can become a mistress because she's a virgin and she doesn't know any of these things. So that's kind of set up. So the first half of this book, or more was really slow for me. It was the thing, like, it was just not clicking for me the way other books in this series have. And then the second half clicked in where they are both like spending a lot of time with his family. And if you've read the, this series in order, this book is extremely satisfying with the found family aspects with the, I mean, not even found family, it's adopted family because this woman chose to adopt all of these children. Um, this book, I was like crying multiple times. Um, <clears throat> there was just so many beautiful moments that made this very satisfying if you've read this series. So this book was literally sitting at a three and a half star and I was listening to it and I was like, man, I don't want to, I don't want to give her a three and a half star. Like I love Lorraine Heath. This isn't working for me. And then it kicked into gear and specifically the last 30% of this book, <clears throat> I was like, okay, this is a five star book. I know the first half was not great, but the feels that it gave me in just the last 30%, that was it. That was it. I've talked way too long in this clip, so we're going to wrap it up, but I did also finish Gloam by Ellie Lily Main, which is the not the last book in this series, but currently the last book in the Monstrous series. This is a like dystopian magical beings have invaded our world, some of them intelligent, some of them not. They're called beasties, um, and each one has a different beastie and a human. Um, and they're all gay, all gay romances. Um and I've been loving this series. This one is probably my least favorite I've read so far, but it's still a four star read. Um, I think it's because this one's very long. They're all pretty slow burn romances, except the first one, just because that one is like, it's the shortest book. So it doesn't feel like a slow burn, even though like it is because it takes place over some time. It just doesn't feel slow burn because the book's not very long which is perfect for me. <laughs> so I won't talk too much about this one because I'm going to film my weekly wrap up once I put my face on. So we don't need to take too long with it. But yeah. So anyway, that's what's going on so far. I'm going to have some breakfast, watch some YouTube, and then I'm going to film my daily or my weekly videos. Um, I also did decide to start my reread of The Duke's Perfect Wife. I am like a, almost a third of the way into it already, and I immediately remember why I love Hart Mackenzie so much. It's great. 
Um, I don't know what I'm going to read next. I think that I'm actually going to do kind of like a try a chapter situation um, later today and maybe film that as a TikTok somehow. I don't know. Um, because I kind of want to start how to be a wallflower since I'm going to be home all day. Um, and I just, I love Eloisa James and I'm so excited that I have an arc of this book. So I think I want to try this one. But then I also, when I was scanning my books in, found this one that I bought before, which is supposed to be like, it's a um, retelling of Maid Marian, but it's like an erotic version. So it's like an erotic historical. I love the cover of this book. Um, this is one that I found at a half price books when I was in the city, when I was in Minneapolis. And yeah, I thought this one could be fun, nice and sexy. I'd never heard of this author before. Um, she also has a sexy retelling of The Cat of Monte Cristo. That's cool. I might have to look that up. Um, but then I also have an arc of The Rogue's Last Letter. And I, when I started reading that one, I wasn't in a historical mood. I was in a fantasy mood. And now I'm in a historical mood again. So maybe we'll try that. So maybe I'll do like a try a chapter of those three later today. But I'm going to stop filming now because I've been, I've been talking too long. Well, hello. I figured I'd film one last clip before I go take my makeup off. <laughs> can't do anything for the for the double chin when we're laying down but that's okay <laughs> at least I still have my makeup on I feel like I did a great job with it today not gonna lie I thought it was a bit heavy-handed but it turned out good I'm always a little impressed with myself when my makeup turns out nice not that it looks bad every day but you know it just feels good so it is uh nine o'clock at night hold on i have my uh whoa background noise going let me just pause that so that's not an annoying sound in the back i had a pretty productive day today oh, my neck like it's hurt. whatever you guys love me and my rolls it's fine um not a super productive reading day but Saturdays aren't always super productive for that, but we're getting through some stuff. I did decide to just keep going with The Duke's Perfect Wife. I'm listening to the audiobook while I um, play games on my phone. That's what I'm doing. That's my favorite way to listen to an audiobook. And I'm just absolutely loving my reread of this. I love the McKenzie family, their busybody selves, and I love Hart, who is a very complex man, but man, he loves his family. Everything that he does is for his family and for England, and the things that broke him and Eleanor apart... Like, oh, it's so frustrating. But there was this one line that I really love, and I put it in my story. So I'll, like, put the um, Insta story right here where he says he'd let her walk away once because he'd been too stupid and because he'd been too stupid and young and arrogant. Now he'd never let her walk away from him again. Even if he had to lock her in this room with her, he'd keep her with him always. And it's just so, like, when we get these peeks into his mind, like, all he's ever wanted was to be with Eleanor. And when he was young, he fucked it up. He fucked it up by not being vulnerable with her. And now, you know, it's how many years later... He lost a wife and an unborn child or newborn child. I can't remember where he lost his long-term mistress who, I mean, he did care about her quite a bit. I mean, he loved her, just not the way that he does with Eleanor. And now he's poised to be prime minister. 
the a Scottish Prime Minister of England, and he has the chance. He's determined to get Eleanor back, and more aware this time of what he lost before and what he stands to lose if he can't have her. And he's definitely still not perfect. And he's keeping a few secrets. But he's more willing now to let some of those vulnerable parts of himself peek through. Because again, he knows what he stands to lose. And all the years that had been lost because he wouldn't be vulnerable back then. So, I don't know. I just love it so much. There are things about him that are obviously frustrating, but he's still one of my favorite Dukes. And I love Eleanor. I love Eleanor so much. She, like, this is like an older, you know, not old, old, but like they're both, like, she's in her 30s, and I think he's in his 40s. You know, they are a not like, young couple this second chance romance is just it's so beautiful like it it literally it makes me so happy like I was tearing up at like random parts too I mean granted like my period's supposed to start in like two days so maybe it's that probably not though I don't need my period as an excuse to cry I cry all the time anyway um no one ever needs their period as an excuse but for me particularly, it's not just that. So anyway, the other book that I just started the beginning of, and once I'm like, either I'll finish this or I'll stop with the audiobook and switch to my Kindle, you know, whenever, when I feel like it. I mean, it is quarter after nine. So like I said, I'm going to take off my beautiful makeup and, um, brush my teeth and everything and then I'll probably get in bed and read uh Reckless Air by Jenica Snow. I received an arc of this from her and it is in the Underworld Kings which was a series that was done back I think it was started in like October November last year um and they're not like directly connected it was like within a world all these different mafia authors wrote books within this world and Jenica Snow is the one who kind of like set that up and she's writing this other book uh-uh, that fits within the world as well so this is a gonna be an arranged marriage between an Italian and a Russian couple and I heard it's gonna be really sexy based on what the trigger warning the content warnings are so I'm pretty excited and I also was joking with my friends today that I haven't read a mafia book this year yet yeah, I don't know what did I read any in January I mean I've read some dark romances this year so far obviously but I don't think I've read a mafia book this year yet which is strange for me is the point it's the point is um I I think part of it is that in December right I do my rereads and a lot of them were mafia so I reread a lot of mafia in December so oh I did because I reread Savage Hearts when the audiobook came out in January, I did read the Mafia book. But anyway, point being, I could be in the mood for that. I've been reading fantasy and historical in February, which has been, it's been good. But I'm ready for something a little darker and spicier. So, yeah. There we go. That's an update. Look at me. I did a good job. I was literally, I was like, I should, I want to wash my face, take my makeup off. And I was like, you should film a clip first. So I will check in with you tomorrow and let you know what I ended up getting through tonight. So yay. All right. It is Saturday morning or Sunday morning. Whoa. I wish it was Saturday morning when we were starting over. Um, I just made some breakfast. I made Gordon Ramsay eggs. If you've never had those, you should look up Gordon Ramsay's scrambled egg recipe. Mm. It seems a bit pretentious when you look at how many steps it is, but it's actually not. It's just like it takes a little bit of time and they're so worth it. So good. And then 
this is a guilty pleasure in a wonderful way. Like, I like to buy these stuffed hash browns from Jimmy Dean. And then it's like my sausage hash browns. And like, this is a biscuit and gravy one. It's all right inside it. It's perfect. So not healthy for you. But it's only, it's one serving, you know? Well, I mean, is it? But it's like all in one. And so all you have to cook is the one thing, man. All about convenience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's the good stuff. Okay. Also, I made myself a mimosa. Because now that I got all my work done yesterday, except for laundry, which, you know, I don't have to be an active participant in laundry while it is washing. Um, tonight is the Super Bowl, which I could not give two shits about, but... What I do care about is hanging out with my friends tonight. So I decided to stay home from church, though, because it's really freaking cold. It's supposed to warm up through the day today. I'm going to bake some brownies at some point to take with. And so at 5 o'clock, I'm going to go to my friend's house. So what I'm going to do today, though, is curl up and read because I don't have anything to distract me. I'm sure I will still find something to distract me. But we're gonna try. So what I finished last night, I finished The Duke's Perfect Wife, five out of five stars. I just love how Jennifer Ashley tells the story. I love this family so, so much. They just, they make my heart so full. Like seriously, they make my heart so full. Um, so this was five stars, absolutely loved it. Then, I didn't realize how short it was going to be because I started the um, Reckless Air, which is an arranged marriage um, Russian and Italian couple. Um, and this was an arc from Jenica Snow. And I finished it at 2 a.m. I mean, it's not like I read it fast, but I finished it because I didn't realize how fast it was going by. So... I've only read a few Jenica Snow at this point. I've read one of her, um, one of the other Mafia ones. I think I've read another rando of hers, a random book that was like in the past. And then I've read her Lycan series. I've read all of those ones. And I don't know, with the Lycans, because it's Fated Mate, I tend to like the instant possessiveness. Seriously, in paranormals, I'm completely okay with insta with insta love and insta possession because it's literally the trope, faded mates. When you feel the connection to your mate, you are in insta love to them. Um, this one though, there were a couple things that were in this that made it a bit creepy for me. Um, our heroine has just turned 18, and here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm okay with that if we say it and then move on from it, but our hero was like into the fact that she's barely legal. Like it gets repeated multiple times. Um, and I really would have been better. It would have been less weird to me if we said like, oh, she's barely legal and now she's being used as like currency by her dad. That's mafia. I'm here for it. But for the hero to consistently remark in his own head that he gets to be the one to, to break her in because she's barely legal and his young bride, like that just kept being reaffirmed so many times past the point where I'm like, dude, you have a fetish for young women now. And that's gross. It's one thing if it's like, I'm told how old she is and I know how old he is. And so I know there's an age gap. Like I read those all the time. I don't mind that. But I don't usually like in an age gap where the thing that they like is that they're young. You know, I like them to like them despite them being young. Like their connection is so deep that despite the age gap, they have to be together. And that's for me, whether it's a woman who's older, whether it's a man who's older, dad's best friend, brother's best friend, whatever the setup, I want them to love them despite the age gap, not because she's young and innocent. 
it was just, ugh, you know? And then it made the sexy time, which was very hot. Like we knew it was going to be Jenna Casino goes super raunchy with like the stuff that happens in there, which I'm okay with, but I wasn't okay with like reaffirming that she is a child basically like, so I'm going to give this one four out of five stars. Cause it was really quick. It was smutty. It was sexy. And it was an arc. If I hadn't read this as an arc, I would probably give it three stars, but that's just a bit of a sliding scale I do when I'm reviewing a book um, because I don't like to trash a book that an author has let me read unless it like really, really pisses me off. And this one was just, it was like literally if she has just removed the qualifier, because sometimes she would say, he would say my barely legal bride. Okay, we don't need to say that. Or he would say my young innocent bride and I'm like okay just cut the young out of the sentence like you keep reminding me that she is just two months past 18 and you're in your 30s like it's weird so but anyway now I don't know what I'm gonna read I have a couple of options I may try to get through guild in kind of like one sitting this is on my February TBR um, I've been wanting to read this and I'm still kind of in a fantasy mood so I want to go for it and then I have How to Be a Wallflower, which I have an arc of that one. And then this is a book that I, I just shared a TikTok about this so you can find it. I'd found this at a used bookstore. It's an erotic retelling of Maid Marian. And when I opened it, which I, you know, I've had this for a few months. And when I was scanning through my books, this one came like back out again. And I was like, oh man, I kind of want to check this out. Um, and the dedication says for all the women who prefer Alan Rickman and Richard Armitage, and they play the villains in different Robin Hood retellings that have been on TV and movies and stuff. And so I'm pretty sure this is erotic between Marion and the Sheriff of Nottingham. So she gets sent, I think, to kind of like corrupt him or like find out his secrets using her body. But this author has also done an erotic retelling of The Count of Monte Cristo and The Phantom of the Opera. And the ratings are not good because these are erotic romance, but I want to see. This, they're all historicals too. So I don't know which way I'm going to go. We'll see. But I'm going to eat breakfast and watch some YouTube and then we'll see where we end up. Well, hey, so it's time to wrap up this vlog and it is Monday night now because last night um, I went to the Super Bowl uh, party with my friends and when I got back home I was reading and I didn't want to stop. So I don't remember the last thing that I've been talking about so I'll just quickly say what I read yesterday and then I have something really fun to unbox that I want to like wrap up this vlog with because I've been waiting for this package for a fucking year. Okay, I'm not even joking you. I ordered this package in March of 2021 and I'm not blaming the company like at all. Like they had serious like um, issues with supply that happened, but I'm excited. So I did finish Guild by Raven Kennedy. I only gave it three stars. I think from what I've read that a lot of people say that the first book is the weakest one in the series and I really see that. Um, there's not much for romance happening in it at all, but there is a pretty interesting world that's set up. So it was okay. I also finished the Maid Marian um, erotic retelling that I'd started, and I don't know if I talked about that. I think I've mentioned it in an earlier clip, and I'm sorry if I didn't, but I'm not going to go into the whole thing now. I gave that three stars as well, but I actually had a good time. Um, I wasn't expecting a ton out of that book, and so I still had a good time with it. It wasn't I mean, it is an erotic historical type, you know, it's an erotic retelling, but it's not the level of erotic that like I'm used to, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's definitely erotic for like 2009, but it's not like, oh wow, this is super erotic. Like sex is a main part of the plot because of the situation that Marion is put in. And then the Sheriff of Nottingham is actually like Will, um, from like the, Robin Hood story and like Marion, Will, and Robin were all friends when they were young and then 
Marion was married off to someone and now she's sent back to um, Sherwood to like spy on Prince John and she ends up getting drawn into some situations. So it was, it was a fun time. Then last night I actually started a new fanfic. I started Compelled by Huffle or Slitherpuff, um, which was recommended to me by some of my viewers when I did my post about those. And this one is a Snape and Hermione retelling, uh, or I mean fanfic, and I'm having a good time with that. I don't have a ton to say about it right now because like I'm only 25% in, but it has to do with a like sex spell being cast over Snape and Hermione. And it is an alternative uh, history one or an alternative universe one where Voldemort has won and it's still like the final year of Hogwarts and Snape is still for the order and him and Hermione are basically the only people left um because like you know everyone else has been killed but a few people and so they're going to like work together and to convince Hermione to convince Voldemort that some of the muggle students should live Voldemort like assigns them to different Death Eaters as their like sex slave basically and Snape isn't planning to actually do that to Hermione obviously but then Voldemort casts a spell that makes them compelled to be together or else they like start to go crazy so it's very interesting um that I'm only 25% in and then I'm almost done reading um, the Duke Who Didn't. This was on my TBR for this month. It was one that, like, I had bought this when I found it at, um, at Barnes & Noble, and I really wanted to read it, and so I put it on my TBR for this month, um, and I'm actually, like, I just got to the epilogue, so, like, I'm almost gonna finish this. This is a Friends to Lovers, um, both virgins, uh, um, he's half Chinese, she is uh, full Chinese and they've just been friends for a very long time. He's a duke. Um, he is keeping it a secret and he visits this one town where she lives like every year and they're both like in love with each other and it's adorable. So I'm loving it. I know that was really speedy but I really want to open this. So this is from the bookish box and this is their um, special editions of the Hades and Persephone series by Scarlett Sinclair. Couple things. Number one, again, I ordered this a full year ago because the bookish boxes, they sell out very quickly and it was so beautiful and I really wanted it. But number two, I'm not as enamored with the series as I was when I read it a year ago, but I'm still pretty interested. Also, I know there's going to be some things that like there was a misprint for one of the covers, but because we'd had to wait so long. They just sent us these covers and they're going to send us some other ones later. But so if you don't want any like spoilers for this box, if you happen to like have ordered it yourself, maybe don't watch this. And my lighting's horrible, but we're going to do it. <gasps> okay. So this I think is a book sleeve. This is beautiful. Wow. This is one side of it. That is gorgeous. Yeah, this is a book sleeve. They used like the spiky stuff. a wine glass. I didn't even know what was in this except for the special editions either, so this is going to be fun. Ooh, this one says, fucking fates, which is a saying that like Hades says all the time. That's awesome. This is kind of fun digging in here. Ooh, yes. I knew there was going to be a, a cool t-shirt. Is a candle. Ooh, 
Ooh, it's a Hades candle from Sweet. Oh, okay, so it's Sweet Florals, Spice, and Ash. The candle. Ooh, it's a Woodwick. Oh my God, this smells amazing. And it's a Woodwick, too. It just says Hades on it. That's really cool. Oh, there's, oh, there's so many goodies in here. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. Okay, so this one is a flower necklace. So because for like Hades, um, or I mean for Persephone's garden. So that's pretty. Ooh, there's playing cards, which I won't open yet. But they say, darling, I win either way. That's kind of cool because they do play, I remember that from book one. That's how she gets sucked into her deal with him as they play a card game. So that's clever. Let's see if I... There's more. Oh. Okay, I think there might... I think that might be it for oh the t-shirt open that i love bookish shirts this is cute what's it say it says queen of the underworld goddess of spring oh my gosh i actually really love this that's beautiful Ooh, it's one of the really soft ones too I love it. Okay. Let us check out the books. Now, I think that there's only two books in here. Um, but they come in these sleeves. Oh, oh my gosh. Wow. It has reversible duck dust jackets, too. Oh, my God. It's so beautiful. Okay, so this is a touch of darkness, gold foil, the edges, it's beautiful. This is this is the inside. Wow. This is really beautiful. It gets me, it makes me want to reread them. That's for sure. Wow. Love it. And then it has the, the Hades version of the first book, which is Game of Fate. So this one has the black stenciled edges. And there's Hades on it. That is gorgeous. And then there's Hades. Wow, that's so cool. And then there's them. Wow, these turn out really cool. These are really cool. I actually haven't read A Game of Fate yet because I just hadn't got to it yet. But, wow, that's how they look together, too. I mean, that's awesome. There definitely was some good stuff in here. I mean, which I'm glad, because this book box was a lot of money, and I waited a very long time for it, so that's good. But, um, yeah, this was really cool. So, anyway, that is my bookish box from the bookish shop. Um... They also had sent me a coupon then because things had like taken so long. So I ordered some like jewelry from them. So I'm excited to get that as well. So anyway, there we go. This was my chaotic vlog. <laughs> I don't know quite when this will go up either. So it might end up being a little couple days yet. But, you know, sometimes when you have a weekend where you get stuck at home, you do something fun, you know? So thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it all to the way to the end, give me a nice pink heart for Valentine's. I know it won't be Valentine's Day when you're watching this, but 
It'll make me feel good. And yeah, thanks so much. Have a good day. Bye.